so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. of hope. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come your way. I know you could be doing a thousand things, but you have stopped because you want to get better. Listen, whatever this week we have thrown at you, or last week, or last year, or last decade, or last century, you are still alive. So long as there's breath in your nostrils and a habit in your chest, everything is going to be okay. Every day above the ground, it's a good day. So I trust that we're going to have a wonderful time. Episode number 125, 125 episodes trying to make us better because when you get better, things around you get better. 
whatever you see around you is the result of what is on the inside of you. We'll never forget that. But as we do, like we do all the time, please pick up your device. I've got my device ready. Pick up your device and share with me. Please tag people, share with people because if it is worth hearing, it is worth sharing. We're going to have a wonderful treat today. Don't die with it. Maybe you're wondering what? Yes. The truth of the matter is that you will die one day. But what I don't want to hear is that you died with it. Don't die with it. Because it doesn't need it. We'll get there. Adelaide Techimensa from Delaware. Welcome, Louisa, Missy Fatch. I hope Atlanta is treating you very well. Good evening, everybody who is here. Greetings, George. Greetings to you. Prophet Isaac Tema. I hope Tema is doing you well. Apart Daniel, God bless you. You are physically and you are spiritually ready to download from the well of wisdom. Well, God is the sum total of wisdom. And we trust that tonight it will be a blessing to us. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. We bless God for your lives. Please, let's do that. Let's do that. Share, 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 share with people. And let's study together. I'm sure we are going to learn a lot of things. Don't die with it. Don't die with it. It doesn't need it. So don't die with it. Listen, all my YouTube family. Listen, we are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. Facebook as the Ambassador of Hope. And YouTube as Franco Fusuapia Official. Michelle, God bless you. Come for a good evening to you. I hope you are doing very well, Brandon. Yes, we are all here. We are doing good. Your dad and mom are all doing good. Blessings, blessings upon all of you. We're going straight. Tonight is going to be a, a wonderful time. You know, I said, all that I want to do is to make you a better person. That is all I want. Juliana, good evening to you. Linda Amua is here. Nanaya Joe from the Republic of Virginia. God richly bless you. Caleb, good evening to you. God bless you so, so much. Kwesi King, good evening to you. Anita, 125 wisdom episodes. Yes, it's a whole lot. A whole lot of content. It's amazing. Don't die with it. You are wondering. But let me tell you what has informed um, today's episode. Don't die. What is it? And, you know, it all has to do with something that is inevitable. It all has to do with something that none of us will escape because nobody gets out of life alive. Never forget that. What we are talking about is like an elephant in the room. And yet we all choose to ignore don't die with it. The reality of the matter is that every one of us is going to die one day. It's going to be an appointment. Never forget that. I know from, from my culture, people don't like to hear that. But it's the reality and it's a fact. But I have thought deeply about where I'm coming from, my generation, the next generation, what I do, you know, the leadership and everything. I realized that one of the things that we don't really do very well with it is succession. I'm talking about passing things on to the next generation. I'm talking about living a full life and dying empty, having nothing with you. You know, today um, we've started a, a program, some of you know, IS Global, led by Brian Amwate, my son. It started in Ghana. It's amazing. It's been amazing. And for the past 10 years, I've come alongside Brian. It's for the young generation in Ghana and in Africa, and because of the miracle of technology all over the world. And for 10 years, I've attended this, and I've always looked for, I've blocked my, my, the years that I wasn't able to come, I've done it digitally. And so it, it's there, I'm constant. And why is that? Because I have this, this heart for the next generation, for the youth, wherever they are. And uh, I feel a weight of responsibility on my shoulder for the next generation. And you should feel too, because I realize that God is a God of generations. We see the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He talks about generations. He talks about fathers. He talks about sons. He talks about daughters. In fact, I'm going to give you about three scriptures that talks about generations. I just want to look at it. In Psalm 78, you know, it's so amazing. I, I'm going to put it right there on the screen for you. Psalm 78, when you begin to read from verse number three, he says that which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Let me tell you something. Wait. Many times we think that Google is the most powerful search engine. It's good. But the most powerful search engine is the Holy Spirit. And I believe that the next search engine is those who are going ahead of us. Google can only give you information. But fathers, mothers, those who have walked the path that you're about to walk, 
will give you information and context. They know things that you don't know. And so let's go on, which we, our fathers have told us. Let's do this quickly. We will not hide them from our children. You see, I, I hope some, some leaders, I hope some parents, I hope some people would hear this, that we will not hide these things from our children. The reason why in some cultures, and especially the one that I was born in, there's so much gap, you know, and my, 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 my dissertation that I wrote for part of my master's was exploring that gap between the old generation and new generation in my country. I see this. And it's right before my, I wrote this about 15 or so years ago, or 20 years ago, tw over 20 years ago. And still, it's there. I have seen it. And it says, telling to the generation to come the praises of our Lord, his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. Let's go right ahead. For he established a testimony, David, upon the Lord in Israel, who commanded their, our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. So fathers, you must make things known to your children. Fathers, you must make known things to your children. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Uh, for he established, a, let's go, can we, can, we, can we roll it very quickly? We don't have too much time here. For he established a testimony that the generation to come might know them. So the generation to come must know some things from the generation now. So certain generations must know. The children who will be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children. So the psalmist is talking about generations, transmitting things, releasing things, handing over the battle. They don't want to die with their testimonies. They don't want to die with the things that, that, that made them great. They don't want to die with the understanding of the Lord. In fact, let's look at Joel. Let's look, let, let's look at the prophet Joel. You know, Joel was about to prophesy some terrible things that were coming upon the land. And he said, hear this, you he was He was addressing the older ones. And then give ye all you inhabitants of the, the, the land. Has anything like this happened in your day or even the days of your fathers? Now listen to this. Tell your children about it. Tell your children about it. Let your children tell their children. So you see that. Passing it on, they don't want to die with it. Don't die with the experience. Don't die with the, don't die with the understanding. Don't die with everything. Let your children, and their children, another generation. Why is it that we are in a generation that a CEO dies, and everything dies with a person? A pastor dies, and in a matter of a few years, or sometimes months, everything crumbles. A father dies, and the family becomes desolate. Why? Because we are not transmitting things. You know, when, when Israel was crossing the, the Red Sea, uh, uh, the Jordan, into their promised land, the Lord says something in the book of Joshua, chapter number 4, verse 5 to 7. You know, so please write these things down. I told you I don't use a lot of scriptures, but I wanted to establish something. Joshua said, cross over, you know, into the middle. And then he says, that, take up a stone on your shoulders, according to the number of tribes of the children of Israel. Then he goes on to say that this may be a sign when your children ask in time to come, saying, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of... So God was saying that, set this thing up because successive generations will have to ask questions. The unfortunate thing is that a lot of the older ones are dying and going and taking it with them because the younger ones are not asking questions. I have a personal prayer. I have a personal prayer that I pray a lot, and I want to share it with you. It's in Psalm 71, only two verses, verse 17 and 8. It's my personal prayer that I've prayed for years, that you, O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. And to this day, I declare your wondrous works. That is my prayer. I pray. Now also, when I'm old and gray-headed, O oh God, do not forsake me. Until I declare your strength to this generation and your power to in everyone who is to come. That is my prayer. It's an unselfish prayer, is it? I want to declare it. And this was David. Listen, every one of you listening to me today, you came on this earth loaded. You have gifts. You have talents. You have aptitudes. You have abilities. Some of you have anointings. But truth is that these things are not for you. Your, 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 your seed is not just for you to enjoy. Do you know that the purpose of a tree is not just fruit, it's seed. Uh, you walk, I'm sure many of you have walked into a grocery store before and you picked up seedless grapes. Oh, I love seedless grapes. Well, whenever they are going, my kids or any mom is going to buy me grapes, I say, I want seedless. I, I, don't have, I don't have time to take all those, you know, maneuver your tongue. And, but anytime you pick up a seedless grape, you know something? You are looking at a fruit that has no future. You are looking at a fruit that has absolutely no future. Why? Because there's no seed in it. Human beings have, I mean, we've, we've done it, but that, that is not. And it will be a travesty to be a seedless grape or a seedless orange. It will be a, tra a travesty to carry what is on the inside of you, your gift, your talent, your anointing, your wisdom, your experience, into your grave. 
So, you know something? Today, I have another generation with me, a man that I so honor, I so love. You know, we are, we are chilling a little bit. Not well, work and happiness right here. And today, we want to spend some time together, an older generation and a younger generation. And we are just going to have a dialogue. We're going to talk. And then I want you to send in your questions. Send in your, if you have questions about these generations and things, please, please send them in because it's going to be awesome. So I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Joe Asma. He's going to join me. You know, we're going to, we, we are going to, we are going to show him up right in a minute. But we're going to put our banner there. And then immediately we're going to have Pastor Joe Asma. And then we are going to us. So let's do that and let's welcome. Uh, Pastor Joe Asma. With you, and he will show himself mighty. People may strip you of what you have, but so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. You may have lost a lot of physical things, but so long as you are alive, you haven't lost everything. When the battle chooses you, God fights for you. It is with you, and he will show himself mighty. People may strip you of what you have, but so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. You may have lost a lot of physical things, but so long as you are alive, you haven't lost everything. When the battle chooses you, God fights for you. It is with you, and he will show himself mighty. People may strip you of what you have, but so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. All right, we are back again, and right on your screen is the one and only Pastor Joe Asma. I'm sure a lot of you, he has more media presence than me. You know, and uh, I, I am another soul. Occasionally, I throw spears, but he dodges all of them. But welcome, evening. Uh, well, good evening, and welcome to Tuesdays with Ambassador of Hope. Thank you, Daddy, and good evening. Please tell, tell, tell the world a little bit about yourself. Let them know. I know some of, of them know you, some don't. So please tell them a little bit about yourself. Then uh, we are going to have fun. Well, my name is Joe Asma. I pastor the All Nations Church in New Jersey under the apostolic covering of. My father here, Dr. Franco Fusuapia, I um, serving, serving under him, learning, being a protege, being a mentee, learning from him to continue the work that God has given to him. And I have, I'm married to one and have four children. Um, I think that's uh, a, good, a good introduction. <laughs> yeah, so that's a very good introduction. you are getting to know me. This is who I am, and I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Daddy. It's an honor to sit with you once again. Thank you. It's thank always you. a joy. It's always a joy to, to <laughs> hang out together, you know. Yeah. We, we, do, we do this together. Right. And uh, Pastor Joe, you know, um, what do you think about this thing that I'm trying to bring up? What are your initial thoughts before we get into other things? I mean, it's, I, I was sitting down listening, and when you talked about don't die without it, you know what came to me, Daddy? Tell me. That on the opposite, mm -hmm. we can also say, don't live without it. Wow, tell me about this. It's interesting. Because oh, yes. <laughs> you're talking like about it. don't die without it. Uh -huh. the, the, that which God has put in us, yes. don't take it with you. Yes. Leave it to the, the next the generation. The doesn't like it. The no, the, no, 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 no. Yes. We need it here. Yes. And so if that is going to work, then those of us that are living must also go for that which we need to live. And oh, so you cannot wow. live without the pro uh, without the uh, mentor uh -huh. without pursuing the uh, the, the, the mantles okay. you don't want them to take them to the grave you want them here right this so is we this live is, in here we this is this is here. awesome this is awesome and that is what we are doing listen it is not too early to plan for your succession That's never also. forget that That's also. it is never too early I tell people all the time father I, be, I have a, an emerging class that I teach and one of the things that I was telling them, I think the last class I taught was um, uh, um, uh, finishing well. Right. And okay. I told them that you must always start mm -hmm. with the end in view. Right. You must always start something. And sometimes people think, oh, I have time. I have. You don't have time. No. And you don't know how long you're going to be around for. So anything that you start, please plan your succession. You know, wh one, of the, one of the issues that I've got about our so-called third world nations or Africa or whatever you and I come from, yeah. Is the lack of succession. We see it in politics, uh -huh. in religion, in church, all of these things. And 
So, sometimes you see 200 year old men who still are trying to run for elections, and if, even in some places, and yeah. uh, you are asking, you, you are 80 years old, you are 75, you still want to run yeah. for an, and I'm asking how much energy do you have? How much mental sharpness do you have? Are there not young people who can run this? For me, that is my heart. I it, don't know it about is. you, but it that, is. That it's that the is same thing. I remember you have said it several times that one thing that you don't want to do yes. is to be carried to the pulpit. Thank you. <laughs> with a walking stick at age no. 80, 90 no and still way. trying no to push way. it. No, no there way. must be that succession. Yes. Plan. And you know, if you're watching, I'm sitting here because of this succession plan and because of taking from one generation to the other. I consider myself a, a second generation or generation next. Why? Yes. Because this is my first generation. And I have to be a gen next after him. I know many people look at me as their mentor, their first generation, but I can't give to you what I have not received. Yes. And so that is the reason we are sitting down. I can only sit here. Why? Because uh, my father here has a mantle. He has great wisdom. He has so much that I would need to tap into in order to serve the generation that is looking up onto me. So this thing is so key. We cannot leave it. You know, you, you said it right. Our generation, our culture, our world today don't see the need of passing on the baton. And it, it has to be intentional from both sides. It mm -hmm. has to be intentional from the side of the fathers, and it has to be intentional from the side of the sons. It's so, it's so true, Pastor Joe. You know, um, somebody asked me the other, the other day about why is these things not happening last time? Well, it, could it be that it's a double-edged sword? It is. It's, number one, the insecurity of the fathers. Okay. And on the other side, the insincerity of the sons. Wow. The okay. insecurity of the fathers mm. and then the insincerity of the sons. But we want to correct this narrative. It has we want to, to make it right. We want it to, to model it. Let me tell you a story. I was reading a book the other day by one of my great leadership mentors. And he talked about the fact that he was, um, he was invited to a funeral, you know. Okay. And he went to the funeral. It was of a great athlete. He was a great runner, great athlete who had, who had passed. And he walked into the church, and the casket was open there. There were family members. And so they all started moving towards the front to pay their respects. Mm -hmm. So he decided to go. And when he stood beside the casket, he looked at the lifeless body of this great, once upon a time, great, amazing machine of an athlete. Mm -hmm. Then he said something called his eye. In the casket, the, man's, the man had a silver-colored button in his hand. Mm. It was to say something that the man was an athlete, you know. Right. But something hit him that he said he would never forget. Mm. Why must a dead person still hold a baton that he got for? And that is wow. what informed it. Wow. Don't die with it. Wow. Why are you still holding the baton? Wow. In a casket. It should have been somebody in somebody else's hand. And I realized that this is one of our great things. So yeah. please, whoever is listening to me, don't die with it. Don't carry it with you. Mm -hmm. The grave does not need it. Mm -hmm. And there are a few things that um, I, I want to say here. When, mm -hmm. when I, 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 I looked at that scenario right. of, of, of that man, and I realized, right. number one, nobody lives forever. No. Nobody lives forever. Mm -hmm. Nobody lives mm -hmm. forever. Sometimes mm -hmm. when we see funerals and caskets and hearses, we don't ever think that it could be ours. Mm -mm. Don't ever live in a fool's paradise. Wow. Nobody is going to be on the cutting edge forever. Wow. I know people that once upon a time, they were like the mega people. Mm. Today, everybody, you remember Dr. Chan told us a story this past ISI okay. about um, him after he left Beulah University. He built right. this university right. he left for a few years and... He mentored the new college president. Yes. He was going back one mm -hmm. day for a little appointment with the man. He walked into the foyer and the PA said, who are you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he said, and, he, and he said, everything we did was like, you know, his, all his photographs were They're gone. Removed. And the young lady didn't know him. And he said, well, my name is, tell, tell the president, Sam Chan. He said, Sam Chan. So the woman picked up the phone and called the president. And said, well, there's a Sam Chan here. Who is doing that? Uh, it was funny, you know, the yeah. way only Dr. Chan yeah. can say that. Yeah. It, it was funny, but I realized that it's one day, thing. One day, mm. one day, we'll be forgotten. Wow. We'll be forgotten. Wow. You are not going to be a poster child forever. Don't have in your hand a baton that you hold so hard that you have to take into your grave. That's a serious thing. Well, but then you, you, you mentioned something yes. just before I, mm -hmm. I, I add to this. This insecurity thing that you mentioned, mm -hmm. 
So I'm trying to understand why the fathers will feel so insecure after the achievements, after all that we have, you know, been able to do, and they still feel insecure about the ge the, the next generation. Yeah, why so? Is there? <laughs> <laughs> It, it, I mean, every time I, I think about it, I think about it and I am, I'm confused. Um, th there were a few things, uh, you know, that I, I had here, you know, but mm. um, we, we, we can look at it. Why, why is it so? Yeah. And I feel that, it, n number one, maybe they haven't listened to us talk. Okay. <laughs> they, have, they, haven't, they haven't listened to us talk, but there's a few things here. Number one, mm -hmm. it could be entitlement. Okay. Well, we feel so entitled that mm -hmm. we... we because of what we want job security, so we are entitled mm -hmm. to this. I started a church, so it must be me. Even if I don't have quote unquote the biological mm -hmm. son, it's like we have to manipulate. Mm -hmm. I started this business, I'm going to die with this business. Mm -hmm. that, that sense of it. The other mm -hmm. one is maybe fear. Okay. You know, we 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 we, we fear to leave. Wow. And so we resist the new generation. We we don't mentor people to take over for work. Sometimes it's just pure resistance, sometimes mm -hmm. it's just poor self-esteem. Or wow. doubt, or, wow. or we think we have invested in this, but we shouldn't have any excuse. Wow, wow, that's, that, excuse. that's so serious. That's that's a good point. That those are very good points you gave us. Now you, you spoke from the father's uh, 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 point of view and from a mentor. I want to speak on the other side and address. Go ahead. Um, um, yes. My my brothers and sisters, the young ones, the mentees, those that are looking up. Listen. If our fathers are going to hand the baton to us and not carry them into their graves, then there are some things that we must also do. And what I think it starts from is a desire to mm. develop. Desire to develop. You must have that personal desire to grow, the desire to do better, to get better. And that will, is what is going to push you into having a passion to pursue what is in their hands, the baton. We must have such a great passion that... You know, we will not let this thing go with you. We will not let it die with you. Yes. We need it to live. So yes. we will not let you die with it. Right. So we are going to live with this in mind that mm -hmm. we are going to pursue you. Yes. Chase after the mentors. They don't have our fathers don't have to they don't have to be the ones to chase us. I won't do it. <laughs> I won't do it. They don't have to be the ones to pursue us. We need what is in their hands. We need their wisdom. And we must, you know, one great example I like in the Bible is this. You know, I know uh, Ambassador of Hope is not another Bible study, but we get our inferences and we get our messages, of course, from the Bible. And Elijah is that, uh, that example, mm -hmm. the passion to pursue Elijah. Mm -hmm. Even from all that his friends were saying, mm -hmm. the other, uh, you know, prophets were discouraging him, but he kept his focus and he pursued because he knew what he was looking for. Yes. And desire. I think that is what we need. Please, please have that personal desire and have the mind to pursue. And when you pursue, go with respect and honor. Let's honor our mentors, honor our fathers. After all, they don't they have nothing to lose. They are they've done their part, they're going. We need them and we must pursue them with respect, with honor. And I think that this goes to all of us, especially in this generation. And not to use them as a blanket over what we want. You know, a, a lot of times mentees gather around mentors because of what they want to get from them. Yeah. And when they get them, we dump them, we, we just walk away. No, that will not, you see, sometimes we think that we're being smart, but <laughs> it goes around to really hurt us. So to my young ones, the young generation, those that are looking up, we need the fathers and we need to be uh, uh, persistent in this. Respect, passion, desire, and ask them questions. You know why I'm sitting here? It's questions. Yes. I'm asking a lot of questions. Don't ask for things, as Pastor Frank would always tell us. Frankly speaking, stated right. Ask for information. Yeah, I remember one time I was preaching somewhere about six, seven years ago in Ghana, and I think I made this point about um, stop begging people for things right. and start begging for information. I yeah. mean, they went on Ghana web and I mean, they chewed me up, you know. Yeah. They called yeah. me all kinds of names. And I felt sorry because of the of the arrogance of ignorance. Mm. You know, the, there's some arrogance about ignorance that sometimes is very nauseating. Yeah. Especially when people don't really get the import of what they're trying to bring. And it's so true. You know, 
I, I want somebody to understand this. You know, you talk about some people trying to be smart. Yeah. I can, I, we can spend all evening. You know, okay. I don't like to give examples. You know, that are too close. Yeah. That people, people will kind of figure out that he's talking about so and yeah. so. But I've had a lot of people come into my life, and from the get go, I just, can tell. I could tell, <laughs> I could smell it because I tell people that if I was exactly stupid, God wouldn't give me this to do, Ooh. and I wouldn't gotten where I was through stupidity. Right. God does not anoint stupidity. No. And so the fact that I didn't speak doesn't mean I don't know, mm. and the fact that I never said anything back doesn't mean that I'm ignorant. Even my ignorance has carried me where I am today. Mm. But some of them, like, you, you, you want to cut corners. You know, you, 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 made, you made mention of covering people's themselves with blood. You know, we, we've yeah. talked about that before. Mm. And so let me share with somebody. You know when Elijah, right. and he followed Elijah. Mm -hmm. And by the way, he followed him for about 20 years, according to Bible historians. Not yeah. just three chapters, but 20 years. Wow. You know, and from what they talk about, chances are that he might even be older than Elijah. Mm. And uh, when Elijah was growing up, something happened, a phenomenon. You know, when the chariots of fire carried him up, his mantle fell, mm. you know, and mm. Elisha picked it up. Mm. Many of you miss the import of that thing. Elisha never put on that mantle mm. immediately. The first thing he did was that he took hold of his own garments and he tore the he garments tore before he put on the mantle of the man. Mm. It tells us something that maybe the younger generation, Pastor Asma, are committing yeah. two crimes. Yeah. You know, sometimes they take the mentor's mantle and then they cover their own. So they are telling the world that, oh, he's my mentor. But underneath, exactly. there's a fierce disregard for whatever the older one. Then the others too, they put the mantle on, then they put their own clo clothing right. over. So even though they are taking from the, the, from the mentor's experience, his wealth, his material, whatever, mm. they still cover their own self like I did it myself. Mm. It's two great mm. crimes. Yeah. It you is. can do that. It's the highest form of dishonor to refuse to acknowledge the doors mm. that you walk through. Ooh. It's the highest level of dishonor to refuse to acknowledge the door. Let me tell you something. Saul may have been throwing spears at David, but the day David heard that Saul was dead, he lamented. And so David lamented over Saul and his son Jonathan, saying, your, glow, your beauty, O Israel, is slain upon a whole place. Israel, the mighty fallen. Mm. You know, mm. David, mm. David understood that God... Sometimes you don't even choose who become your mentor. Exactly. God can choose spear throwing mentors at you, which we don't want. Which we don't want. <laughs> yeah. But they help but you, that is so that when you also become a king, yeah. you don't throw spears. So God can use a, God can use a Saul to raise you. Saul raised David and taught him how to become a king, mm. not a warrior but a king. Mm. So let's go. Let's go. This let's is, go. This let's is go. good. This I, is good. I, yes, I'm this enjoying this. I I hope you you're learning and you're calling and sharing with friends all over. This is a must watch right now. I, I'm learning here. I'm sitting here and I'm learning. I'm learning a whole lot, and that's why I like to sit where I'm sitting and always uh, I'm learning from this great wisdom. So please share it with someone right now and invite them on. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's, it's not too late. So this thing about taking the mantle and wearing it over mm -hmm. hours, yes. it, it's become a very known, it's not well, it's not said in public, but that is what... I believe this young generation is struggling with that. Right. And I, I, I pray that this will be corrected now because okay. a lot of people are short-circuiting their destiny, their right. assignment mm -hmm. because of this, uh, um, of this practice. Right. Because it doesn't get you anywhere. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. You, 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 are, too, they, they tell you are too smart for your britches. Yeah. You, know, you are too yeah. smart for your own good. Yeah. And uh, it catches up with you eventually. Mm. It really does. Mm. You know, in life, in religion, in business, in politics, it mm. catches up with you mm. eventually. Mm. And I think that people don't really have have the, the gift of waiting and patience. That you is know, so key. Yes, the gift of waiting and patience. You know, we, we, we get about, you know, uh, 5,000 mm. fake, fake book friends and mm. we think we are the whole thing, you know. <laughs> fake book friends. Yeah, fake, fake book friends <laughs> and we think we are the whole thing. Um, yeah. I was teaching um, last week Okay. To some group of leaders. I think I went to you. I yeah. went with you yeah, yesterday, Wednesday you. morning. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling them that if th those people, if they look into uh, my generation, yeah. we still have kept our friends. Yeah. We still have I kept our friends. That. Yes, yeah. I said yeah. it. Yeah. That yeah. my friends that I had and we started ministry from 40 something years ago, mm -hmm. they are still my friends up to today. We talk, I check up on them. You know, we may not always go out to play golf or to, you know, but we are, we are but this, the turnover. So what is the disconnect? Um, you have to tell me. You are there. You have to tell. I don't know. It's, it's serious, though. 
You know, we can't oh, keep friends. I've blocked him. Yeah. I've removed him. Yeah. I don't want to make any goes on and on and you're wondering where is where's the longevity? And listen, don't die with it. Mm. Don't, don't die, die with it. Relationships with really it. matter. And plus, plus uh, that, that I'm going to say a few things from my perspective. Okay. Then I'm going to allow you to say something from your perspective. Yes, please. To anybody who um, has um, people that look up to you, mm. um, you carry something like my age, my, my, my season, whatever it is. You know, uh, you know where I sit right now, mm. some few months back, you know, I stepped back. Yeah. And trust me, you will not believe how many people have tried to not let me step back. But I had to be intentional. Yeah. I really had to be intentional, yeah. you know. So generally, I'm not, I'm not like quote unquote the Pastor. president. Pa no, I'm not. Yeah. You know, people call me, can I come preach? I say, go talk to them. You know, yeah. even today, somebody come and say, go talk to them. Yeah. Leave me alone, you know. And the beautiful thing is that when I came here and I went back, church was even Big. bigger, bigger Big. than when yeah. I left. Yeah. And I said, yeah. wow. Yeah. And yeah. genuinely, I was happy, very happy. So let let me share something with the older ones. Listen, this is what you can do from my perspective. Then he will talk from his perspective. Find some people. Locate people. Mm. Look around. They are there. You know, Asasma, Paul wrote a letter to Titus. Okay. And in Titus chapter 1, verse 5, he says that, I, for this reason I left you in Crete, that you may set in order the things that are lacking and ordain mm -hmm. elders in every city. Ordain mm -hmm. elders in every city. Mm -hmm. He was talking about Crete. Yeah. I left you in Crete. Yeah. Elders in every city. Yeah. Then I read on. And Paul is saying to Timothy, you know, you Christians, you are slow bellies, you are liars, you are gluten. And I'm saying, people like this, and Paul says that there are still, there are still leaders, leaders there that you should look for them. And ordain them. Yes, so there are people, there are good people. You, you, they don't even have to be good, there could be potential. Mm. You know, mm. in my first book, Journey into Destiny, I shared a testimony about, in the city of London, how, quote, even in Atlanta, how, mm. quote, unquote, some of the bad boys and bad girls in society Started yeah, coming to our church. Yeah. We got a bad a reputation. Oh, that mm. church is mm. for play people, it's for this, it's for this. But we turned them around. Yeah. Yeah. That is what it you don't go into a mine to mine gold looking. Mm. You, you you dig the dirt before you get the gold. For exactly. me, that is how I see humanity. Exactly. So there are people there. And when you find them, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things. Very quickly, I'm gonna say for number mm. one, listen, talk to them. Mm. Talk to them. Whatever it is, communicate with the young ones. Talk to them. For me, I know there are a few young ones around me in my church and things on Sundays. They come to my office, they hang around the corridors, and sometimes I stand and talk to them. I try to at least drop one thing into their heart mm. before they go. I talk to mm. people. Mm -hmm. Number two, not only talk to people, listen to them. Because this generation has a language. This generation has a sign. And the thing about it is that sometimes we have not trained ourselves to listen to what people are not even saying. Now, sometimes they don't have to speak to talk. They don't have to talk to speak. So listen, then number three, guide them. Mm. Guide them. Show them. You don't have to scream at people. How do you guide? Sometimes you model the thing. And then the fourth thing is you show them. You show them. Jesus did things and he told the disciples, do the same thing. Show them how to do it. Be Michael Give them the tools and let them deliver. If they don't, then they have no excuse. Then number, number five, give to them. I know this giving thing, um, I, I believe in giving. I'm an incorrigible giver. Maybe my wife tells me it's part of my, my, my spiritual gift. And I agree. You know, in Romans chapter 12, one of the spiritual gifts is the gift of giving or generosity. And that is me. And I know I, I know people talk about giving up, giving whatever. For me, giving is giving. I do not bat my eyelid to give. I, you know, I, I'm a believer in Jesus who says, don't know the left, know the right. So there are a whole lot of things, you know. I wouldn't mind buying a whole set of instruments. Somebody knows me. You know, I'll buy it for you. You don't have to buy it for me, but if I have the means, I'll buy it for you. Do, you don't have to put my names on your drum donated by so-and-so. No. So we, we should learn to give to the young ones too. Mm -hmm. Help them. If you have to pay a ma one month rent, do it. If you have to go, sometimes you know how I give to young people. I go to their churches and I preach for them. They cannot quote up, please forgive me, they cannot afford me mm -hmm. if we went by the book. But do I have to be afforded? No, I cannot afford Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he gave to me. You know, then you fight for them. Why? How do you fight for them? That, some of the young ones, they have a lot of interesting uh, characters and idiosyncrasies. <laughs> and sometimes you need to fight for them. Yeah. I take bullets for them. I know. Yeah. I look into yeah. their field. You know, there are people who always want people to be crucified. And I think last week, my, my, my helpers here, mm -hmm. I taught them a new word. And then they were laughing about Shadow Friday, you know, mm -hmm. deriving mm -hmm. happiness from somebody's misfortune. That is not the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And then you pray for them. 
So this is what I have. I don't know what you have for that. It's the I'm same thing. That I listened to you. I wrote them down. Right. And I realized that it works both ways. So you talked about talking to the sons, the fathers, talking to the, the sons. And I think that is, it works on that same way, on the opposite. Sons, we need to talk to the fathers. We need to make time to sit with them and get the information. Get the information from them. And then on the second point, listening to the young ones. Young ones, let's listen to the fathers. Pay attention to what they are saying. Pay attention to instruction. Pay attention to what they are leading us, uh, 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 they are telling us. And the third thing that he said that the older generation must do to the, the younger generation is to guide them. Now, if they are guiding us, then we must obey their guidance. So obedience is key. So everything that the fathers are giving to us, we also have a counter. We have a responsibility to them. He talked about showing them or showing us. If they are showing us, then we must be willing to learn. Because if they can show all that they want to show, if we don't have the openness, then all, all of that goes to waste. So be willing to learn. And then fighting for them, or, or even before the fight, you, talk about, you talked about giving to them. Fathers give to sons, and sons give to fathers. There's this whole thing about this generation, about this giving thing like you talked about. Listen, give time, give resources, give respect, give whatever it is. You're not buying your way there financially. It's not greasing their hands so that they will do things for you. But it is just biblical. It's a principle. It's a principle that we must give ourselves into, into giving unto our fathers. And then he talked about fighting for us. If the fathers are fighting for us, then we must be in a bigger position to fight for them, cover them. You know, go and do the fight without even asking why you're fighting. And when it is done, you come back and say, oh, father, that, that today, you know, I fought for you out there. And you'll be asking about what? No, they were just talking bad about my my mentor, about my pastor, and I needed to fight. Please, let's stand for them. And this social media age, a lot of things are posted on social media. Please, when you see it, stand for your mentor. Stand for your pastor. Let's fight for them. And then finally, you talked about praying for them, and that you know is so key. Paul said you know, in 2 Thessalonians, uh, when he talked about that, about the fact that pray for us also, yes. Yes. Uh, that, that God may deliver us from, from wicked from and wicked unreasonable, and unreasonable men. men, for not all men have faith. faith. You know, so we need to cover for them. For everything that we desire and we want them to give to us, it must be same from us to them. That's brilliant. You got it? That is brilliant. Now, but that's there are a few questions here that sure. uh, let's field. Number one, um, it comes from one of your sons, you um, know, um, no, let's 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 go up. Let's go up. There's one from Clifford. If you want to go up before uh, Crowns came, so we'll do Crowns right. later. Right. But there's one from Clifford. If you look at Clifford's before we go to uh, Crown. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. He says that what are some ways we the young ones can get closer to learn from our leaders while maintaining honor and respect, so we don't become familiar. Don't become familiar. Don't. I think he has familiar. answered it. He has answered ahead. it. You know, you've answered it, and that familiarity is key. And so maintain that honor, maintain that friendship. I mean, I don't want to use the word friendship because he's not your friend. Your mentor is not your friend. Your mentor is your leader, is a father. And so, number one, know that there must be that gap. Know that Eli, even Joshua, even Joshua and Moses, all we know about is about Joshua following <laughs> until Moses died, mm -hmm. and then he's brought to the limelight. Right. Whatever position you are in, you're not in struggle with your father and your mentor. Keep that following stature or uh, status or position or whatever you may call it and follow. Continue to follow and learn. And that is the first thing you do. And number, number two, in, in talking about familiarity, you don't want to be putting yourself in the same space fighting for what he, he's already doing or has. Know that there's a point and there's a place of elevation that God will have for you. So maintain that place of honor and of respect. And at the same time, you are close. At the same time, you, you are not walking into every space fighting for that space. No, but you are, you are following through by observation and by imitation. And wow. that is why, uh, you know, so, some of the ways you can push yourself 
into uh, maintaining I, that, I, I that. like it. I really, really like that. You know, um, Pastor Asma, one of the things I realized about people is they don't know how to manage exposure. Mm. And one of the greatest gifts that God will ever give to you is exposure. When yeah. a great person, a leader, father, whatever, um, lets you come close and he yeah. exposes some things to you. I realize yeah. that sometimes people mismanage yeah. those things. I've had people that I, I tested with a little bit of exposure. Yeah. And before you know, you hear from another guy. Yeah. When you do that, you go to the back of the queue. Yeah. For a long time, it could take years because yeah. sometimes name dropping. Oh, Papa said, Mama said. Yeah. You know, you have to be very cognizant yeah. of the fact that yeah. there are some things that are shared with you that is just for you. Yeah. It's for your ears only mm. and it's for your eyes only. Mm. You don't have to let people know. Sometimes, for me, there are people in my life that I hardly, some, some of them I share with yeah. you, um, I'm talking about presidents, I'm talking about yeah. great people, yeah. occasionally I'll disappear in Atlanta. Yeah. I know where I go to and yeah. I know the places I walk at. Yeah. But I don't come mention I was here and I yeah. talked to this person. And no, no, you don't have to do that. Yeah. So it's a lot of wisdom. And, and, and I think that, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mean go to ahead. catch you, but I think that a lot of the times, these young ones, there is that feeling of, I've got it. Mm. I'm the one that knows it. Yeah. You know, I, I have I have his his ears or I know. And it gives some empowerment, some, you know, entitlement and um, territorialism. And that is so dangerous to be. And if the if the father entrusts you with something, you have to know that he is because he trusts you that he's giving you giving it to you. Yeah. Protect it until he allows you to share it. You keep that as this is brilliant. I hope you are loving yeah. it. Yeah. Now, Crown Crown Prince, I knew I knew Crown Prince will ask me <laughs> questions, hard questions. You are in trouble, man. He says that concerning Elijah and Elisha's event with yeah. the mantles, mm. has some quote unquote Elijah's abused this concept and used it as a system of control. I mean, the answer is built in it. Mm -hmm. On the people mm -hmm. coming, yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, there there are always abuses and excesses in everything that is good, and people can pull things out of script, scripture to control. That is mm -hmm. why. I'm seated here today with Pastor Asma because we want to model something. Yeah. Listen, if you have got it, you've got it. Yeah. If you don't have it, you don't have it. And I realize that many times people, people, human beings by nature, we want control. It's mm. a pecking order. Mm. You go to a poultry farm, the, the, the most wicked chicken pecks the other one, this one, until the last one, you know, they lose all their feathers. And psychologists call it the pecking order thing, a syndrome. Yeah. And people have used it to control. And yeah. um, the, the thing about it is that um, I believe that to a, a degree, some of us are trying to bring that thing away, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, God didn't give us authority to control people. Mm -hmm. And when he said have dominion, he didn't say dominate people. Mm -hmm. You know, you wow. are, nobody is your property. No. Everybody ultimately is responsible to God. Mm -hmm. And so, crown, again, I don't think it's, 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 it's good. They have used it to control. Right. And if you have ever been that, I pray that the Lord will deliver. I mean, not you. You, <laughs> you are controlling you. <laughs> <laughs> now, crown has a second question. Please bring it up. Bring it up. Did Elisha receive the impartation by virtue of Elijah's mantle or by the sacrifices of his service? Mm. When did the impartation take place as it were? I believe that it was not just the mantle falling on him. No. And that, I feel that all the years that he followed, mm. because before there's a departure, mm. uh, there's an association. Right. And within that association, there's an impartation. Yeah. So I believe that for the 20-some years that Elisha followed Elijah, mm. that is why he began to have his impartation. Yeah. I don't think impartations are instant. No. I don't think impartations just happen. Yeah. Remember that there's 50 sons, you know, when the, the two were walking mm -hmm. and 50 were talking. Yeah. Two yeah. were walking, 50 were talking. Yeah. Two were walking, mm -hmm. 50 were talking. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. I won't get into details, mm -hmm. but you know, <laughs> you need to walk with your father and let the others that talk. You, know, you need to walk with your father. Yeah. Close your ears and let the others talk. And later they will all say that the spirit of Elijah rests upon mm -hmm. Elisha. Mm -hmm. They saw something. I don't mm. think it was just the mantle. Yeah, that, and also, how about what Elijah told Elisha that when you see, see me, me go. go, right, right, and so it, it had to be uh, until you see. Yes. And Elijah, Elisha followed through. There yes. was a whirlwind. There was a storm. There was the noise of those that were standing by, telling him all kinds of things. But he kept his eye on when you see me go. Yes. And it was when he saw him being taken off that he screamed, my father, my father. And so the impartation like that he's saying, it's not something that happens just at, at the time or at one time. It is something that goes through preparation, process, you know, uh, consistency, diligence, staying on, on the path of, of, wow. of, of pursuit. That's amazing, Pastor Asma. Um, can you find a question from Alex Boateng? Alex as in L-A-L-E-K-Z. Alex, but yeah, this is what Alex says. Alex mm -hmm. says our generation is so quick 
uh, to be exposed. There's a danger with premature exposure. Yeah. Don't forget. God will have to hide you. You know, I think somewhere in Isaiah 49, you know, you read the first four, five, it talks about you being hidden in the quiver of a, of a like an arrow in a quiver. God mm. will hide you sometimes. Mm. He will straighten you when you understand mm. how they used to make arrows, you know, from the mm. sycamore tree, which is crooked. They pluck it, they strip it, they stretch it, they oil it, wow. they stretch it some more. They, it goes through a lot before it becomes wow. enough, before it gets the arrow point. Mm. Other than that, then the Bible talks about something like you are shot like an arrow from a deceitful bow. Which means if the, the shaft is not straight and polished and, and technically okay, no matter how powerful the iron arrow head is, you shoot it, it will miss the target. That's and so true. God will have to strip you. And today's generation, we don't like the stripping. Mm. We like the soft life. We don't want you to be talked to. I, I, I thank God for the people who mentored me. They screamed at me publicly. Mm. I was an interpreter. You, you, you lose your train of thought, my pastor will slap you at the back. Mm. If it was to be today, I would have left 10 churches. <laughs> I had nowhere to go. And I'm who I am. It taught me patience. Sometimes people look at the way I handle people, the way I'm so laid back, even though I'm strong. And they want, it's the training I got. Mm. I did not run away from boot camp. Anyway, never, never, never mind. That's Our so generation good. is so quick to be exposed. Easy mm. access to audience, audience by social media audience. platforms. Mm. You said it, boy. Mm. Shortlist the time frame, frame to, to sit under a mentor to learn. At what point or time can one leave to, 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 to can, can one leave a mentor to be on his or her own? Um, I don't. I don't think, unless pastor. I don't know. Does it really stop? Do you? Say that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. That I don't think I it don't stops. I don't think it stops. You know, you can, you can, you can. Maybe there's a church. There's a time that you feel that somebody is up there. He has to go do his thing. Yeah. You don't have to be mad to leave a place. No. You don't have to fight to break anything. There may be times that maybe you have outgrown the mentor in some ways, mm. but still keep the honor. Still keep yeah. the honor. You don't have to expose anybody. Yeah. Still keep the honor and do that. Um, like you are saying, the fact that you have so many people on social media platforms does not uh, actually say a lot about you. Because your gift doesn't say a lot about you. That's Today's true. generation don't know the difference between an anointing that and talent. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. so we, we have to be very careful about that. Wow. Uh, yeah, we, for me, I, I always want the hand, the fingerprint of my mentors to, be. to always be on me. All right, Adelaide, Adelaide Tachimensa. Adelaide Tachimensa is my, is it niece or something? <laughs> niece. Adelaide of Osofia, now Adelaide, Adelaide Tachimensa from yeah. Delaware. How do you handle mentors who talk negatively about their own spiritual fathers or mentors behind their back uh, in your presence without realizing what they've done? Pastor, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave. This one is a hard one. That's because a difficult one. Niece, <laughs> I'm going to hand it over to How you. How do you handle mentors who talk negatively about their own spiritual fathers? Just be quiet. Just learn to be quiet. If they are talking about their mentors and their spiritual fathers, just identify why you are in that space in the first place. And so learn to filter in that conversation whatever they are saying about their mentors. Don't, you don't, you know, the thing is this, these are your mentors. You're talking about your mentor, talking about their mentor, all right? Are there lessons in that for you? You take that lesson and you keep it. That could be a test of your of your uh, stewardship, a test of what you can you can handle. Sometimes the father or the mentor might might be telling you something, and you think that he's gossiping about someone. For all you know, is a test of your integrity. And so, what you do is to learn to be quiet. The fact that you've heard it doesn't mean your mouth must speak it. Mm, and like so, that. only filter, only keep what you need, what you don't need, leave it. And please hear this. For any mentor, remember, as you know, we've heard this before, man of God. Before they became of God, they were men. Ah. And our mentors would definitely have their mistakes. You will see, especially when you get close to them, you see the scars on their back. You see their singlets taking you. You see a lot of things, but ours is to cover them and not to expose them. And I think I'll leave it right there. Thank you. Thank you. And listen, you don't correct up. Yep. You appeal up and you correct down. That's it. I want you to put behind, uh, at the end of what I've just said, if you're writing, write seller. <laughs> it's a biblical thing. That's it. Seller in your, in, you know, seller in the Psalms, mm -hmm. it means stop and meditate on it. Yeah. Think Reflect. about it. You don't correct up. You mm -hmm. know, if you are working somewhere and you start correcting the people who pay your paycheck, yeah. you are going to have a middle name called unemployed. Mm -hmm. And that is not too smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you appeal up and you correct down. Mm -hmm. There's a way to do that. So, 
Let's see if we have any other questions. Other than that, Pastor Joe, if you have something to tell us, um, we'll be happy. I, I, I see you've written a few things. No, I think I, sh I shared, I shared them. Uh, a you lot shared of the them, okay. That, okay. That, that I had here. Somebody know. quoted you. Said the fact that you've heard it doesn't mean you should speak it. I like that. I like that. I That's like that. that. <laughs> I, I hate it. Next time I say, I say, Pastor Joe Asma said. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you heard it doesn't mean you should speak. The next time again, I'll say somebody said. By the third time, I'll say like I've always been I've saying. Always been so saying. that becomes mine. That is copyright. I have the right to copy. So that, that, that's important. Yeah. So let's go. Let, if yeah, if we have any more questions, um, we 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 can feel that. But um, I think I I want to. I, I just put something here mm. um, about the um, the leaders of the emerging world. Mm. Maybe politics. Maybe a pastor, CEOs, and things. Um, please have time to invest in your successors. Wow. Have time to invest in them. Do not arrest or block their development. Do not be afraid. Many years ago, I was the academic dean of, um, of a seminary, Bible school in the United Kingdom, in Finsbury Park, Center for International mm. Christian Ministries. And before they graduate, um, we, we always spend time with them talking. I remember for years, I used to tell them this that. Almost all of you, you are going to go out wherever you, from, they came from all over the world for class, man. I tell them that you are going to be huge, you are going to be great. But I want you to know one thing, that I will always be your dean. Mm. And I will always be the one who taught you. Mm. I taught you the Pentateuch. I taught mm. you Greek. I taught mm. you this. I will always be. So if you hear your PA downstairs arguing with a stylish old man who refused to make an appointment, mm. know that it's me. Mm. And so that is for you, the mentor. Understand this, that no matter what it is, no matter how they, big they become, you are forever their father. If that is, if they remember, and there will always, always be people who will also have selective forgetfulness, selective admin, amnesia, mm. like you know the the lepers. They will forget. Mm. Mm. But listen, soldier on. And the other side, let me talk a little bit for him before I get off. Mm. Some of you listening to me, maybe some mentors, some fathers, some bishops, some apostles that uh, you trusted, you looked up to, you 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 helped, may have may have done things to you. They may have disappointed you and things. Listen. Don't let that thing become um, something that blocks you from going forward. Yeah. Nobody escapes this life without scars. Mm. And you must look at this from a different perspective that whatever I went through is for my benefit. Wow. Remember the Bible talks about the fact that they sold Joseph. Mm -hmm. They sold Joseph. Mm -hmm. You remember that passage? Yeah, they they sold Joseph. Mm -hmm. But I read about it in the book of Psalms. They said so he sent, sent Joseph. Joseph. Sent so once they, think, they thought they were selling him, God was, was sending, sending him. him. Wow. So look at it from that perspective. Sometimes, I don't know, but I'm old-fashioned. But No, I'm mm. not old-fashioned. I'm old school, but I think sometimes some generations are too mm. sensitive. Mm. There's a question for you. Can I ask this just yes, before go ahead, that? Before because you when you talked about the mentors investing, I've written down here, invest in the relationship with, the, with, your, with your mentor. And I circled it because same way that the mentors must invest into their mentees, it's important for us mentees to learn to make sacrifices invest in the leadership in the mentorship that you want to receive mm. don't only take it as receiving 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 but be in the place of being the giver uh. and that is so key into that uh, uh, uh mentorship that you want to receive thank you we have four minutes to pass us my deal with this then there's one question from jan jane okay. and then we'll fill that good evening bishop and pastor asma please i have a question for pastor asma what is one wisdom key you have used to handle with care the mantle you have been given by your mentor? Ooh. <laughs> well, I, the only thing you know, this, God, I'm not the one this, one. <laughs> this April 19th, April 19th will be exactly 15 years that um, that he laid hands on me into full time ministry. And on that day, he said something very profound that Sunday. And that thing has stood with me. He said to me, Joe, listen to this. In this walk in ministry, you must understand that. Um, you know, it just vanished. I just went blank on it. But it says that many people will be doing two things. Or if two people are doing the same thing, it is likely one, one is, is irrelevant. irrelevant. Yeah. If two people are if, doing the same thing in one, in one location, location it is, chances yeah. are that one of them is irrelevant. That's exactly how he said it. This, yeah. was, this became my mantra, and I still walk in it. And it's the reason I do what I do. I do not want to become irrelevant. And, to, and so in staying relevant, I continue to learn Learn from the word, learn from my mentor, spend time praying, spend time building myself, and just taking you know what I've been given seriously to do so that I stay relevant. Yeah. Dan Jane, Dan Jane has a 
What, what is the difference between a father and a mentor? And mentor? That must be answered by the one who asks. I, I don't think. Well, a father, a father anchors you to your destiny. A mentor. Somebody can even mentor you without liking you. Mm -hmm. It's like your school teacher. Yeah. Paul says that you have many mentors but don't have many fathers. So a father is the one who really gave birth to you in some areas and mm. things. Mentors, you can have so many, but you can't have too many fathers. Yeah. So yeah. that is for people who, who rent fathers, rent a father. Jan Jane says, good evening, Bishop and Pastor. Please, what does it look like to surrender to God's will? Ooh. You know how it looks like? <laughs> have you, have, have you, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. Um, if you ever ate breakfast, yeah. and the breakfast consisted of fried eggs and bacon, mm -hmm. God's will is in there. Yeah. The chicken who laid the eggs is not surrendered to the will of God because they laid the eggs and went. Mm -hmm. The pig that gave you the bacon surrendered to God's will because it died. God's will, sometimes you die and you must, listen, I can, I can take you to a place where me, I died. Mm. Mm. Paul says that, and I think it's in Galatians 2.20, that I'm crucified with Christ, yeah. nevertheless I live, and yet not I, but, but Christ, Christ who lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I mm. live by the faith of the Son of God. Mm. Following God's will, if anybody told you it was easy, then you don't have flesh. Mm. But once you walk in it, you die to some things, and some things don't matter anymore. Dr. Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. he led the civil rights movement. He knew that he, he, he was like a moving, a moving target, as it were, mm -hmm. that one day he would be taken. I remember his last preaching that he did before he went to die the next day or so. Yeah. He talked about going to the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And he says, I've been to the mountain. I may not get there with you, but it doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. You must get to that place where you are so surrounded to him that nothing matters anymore. Commitment. Commitment. Wow. Commitment. 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 Wow. That so I th I think we're going to do this. <laughs> this is so good. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, it feels so, like we're just well, started. Ro Robert, Robert, <laughs> Robert, Roberta says, uh, Pastor, maybe you can answer this. Roberta, oh, it says for me, uh -huh. Roberta Rendo says that what is one key of your success? I don't know if I'm successful, but um, <laughs> if you're going to ask me, I'm a, uh, be yourself. That's all. Be yourself. Because success is relative. Yeah. To the blind, success is sight. Mm -hmm. To the broke, success is money. To the lonely, success may be a relationship. Mm. So, success is, must always be qualified. Mm. I don't know what success looks like, but I just do what I've been called to do, mm. and I give God the glory. Amen. But I just I just like to be myself. I just yeah. like to be myself. Yeah. Hey, Kojobio, don't bring yourself. You, 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 <laughs> you'll be steady. Yeah? He's talking about copy and paste. <laughs> I like that. Kojo, God bless you, Rico. God really bless you. That's why we are amazing. sitting here. Yeah, yeah. There's an original and there's a copy. <laughs> <laughs> John, I, I know it took a little time, but that is me. Sometimes I can be crazy. Please forgive me. Listen, I think I think we've got to end here. It's oh, been a wonderful time. It's been I don't know, Pastor, if you have something that you can look in the camera and tell us. It's been an amazing yes, time, and I think this is what it's all about. This is what uh, we want to model. It's doable. The succession is there. We have to keep it going. And so the older generation, let, I mean, to, to give the baton to the younger generation, as we sit here modeling. This is what it is. It's not only about the talking. And um, I like Ambassador of Hope. It's a whole curriculum. Yes. And the practicality. We come in, not only teaching, but also modeling how it is done. Yes. And so I'm sitting here as second generation to first generation, letting you know that this can be done. Yes. To the younger ones, let's learn from our fathers. Don't let them die with it. Pastor, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, protest here. That the protest says that um, we should do this again. So maybe sure, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, come up, we'll come back next Tuesday. We'll come we back will. on Tuesday. But I've got three announcements for you before we get out of here. Very, three. Number one, um, I'm putting together a Bible school. Um, I couldn't play the whole thing here today. Next week we'll play it or mm. we'll put it somewhere. Um, I want to start an online Bible school. You know, there are so many voices out there. Sometimes you listen and you cringe. Because the foundation of the scripture is not there. And so if you want to be part, uh, please go to our, or download our app, um, advancedlife.org, mm -hmm. ad advancedlife.org, advancedlife.org. You see my logo, you see my photo there, Down download it. There's the information out there. Or you go to the Ambassador of Hope, our page on Facebook is there. Send us information, information is there. I did a little clip telling you about everything we're going to do. The second thing is ISI 2024, the flagship leadership thing. Yeah. Listen, if you have never been in one, you are square. It's going to be I mean, from the 17th to the 21st of July. Amazing speakers Amazing. are coming. Things are going to happen. We are expanding it. Mayors, things. We are going to do 
amazing, amazing, amazing things. Then, then finally, if you are in Ghana, at the University of Professional Studies, Accra, UPSA, mm -hmm. IS is happening, started this evening. Yeah. I'm speaking about three or four times. Bishop Tito Bismarck is coming. Prophet Nana Pukusa Kodias, Sonny Badu is going to be in the house. Archbishop Charles Ajinasa tonight, he was out of the ballpark. Amazing. You know, we have politicians, you know, that I'm, not, I'm not going to name him, name him before he gets here, but it's going to be amazing. All that remains for me to say is that it's been a wonderful time. Pastor, yeah. please pray for people and let's get out of here. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for this blessed opportunity. I pray for your people all over, every listener, every viewer. I ask, oh God, that you would grant according to the desires of their hearts. Lord, anyone going through any struggle right now, we ask for your visitation. We ask for your touch. Heal the sick. Heal the brokenhearted. And Lord, lift heads that are bowed down up to your glory. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Listen, he has prayed, but let me give you the benediction by telling you that they put the information here for the Bible school. Send an email to info at advancedlife.org. It's out, out there. Maybe they'll put it there. It's from the Ambassador of Hope um, thing. Or you can send a text to plus one four seven zero two nine five one four four one. It's out there. It's all there. Have a good evening. We love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Bye-bye. Hello, Emerging Leader. For the past few weeks, I've had some few people that are mentoring behind the scenes, Emerging Leaders for the Future. And in our deliberations, in our learning together, I realized that there was still a need that had to be met. I realized that there are several people who have a genuine call of God upon their lives, but somehow they've been thrown into the deep end and so they don't have the tools and the skills to pastor effectively. There are others too who just want to know the Bible for themselves. I've got some curriculum that I've put together for many years looking for expression. And I think this is the time. I'm about to set up an online Bible school for people who are serious minded. People who want to have a very good grasp of the scriptures. Because you and I know that we live in days that people can just throw scriptures all over the place. And it's become very dangerous. So we want people who are established, people who have their character rooted in the authority of God's word that never changes. So if you are interested in it, we're going to put some information out there for you. Send us a message, send us, and we'll let you know the dynamics, the times, and the frames of what we're going to do. We are looking to do this to start with a certificate, go to bachelor's, all the way to doctorate degree. Every big thing starts small, and we're going to do that. We believe that we have the wherewithal, the personnel, the resources to make you a better leader. So if you're interested, let's do that. Get the information, and then we'll get something done for you. I look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye. Hello, Emerging Leader. For the past few weeks, I've had some few people that 